Hey, Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino. Tonight, we finally have a winner in the U.S. Senate primary race. We'll break down the delayed election results. And ESPN remembers the late Eddie Sutton. All that and more is next on Hey, Kentucky. Welcome to Hey, Kentucky, along with LEX 18 Sports Director Keith Farmer. And Keith, the results of this election, we've been waiting, you know, definitely a week, but it was supposed to happen in May, so this is a long time coming. Yeah, it does seem like it's been forever, and I jokingly mentioned the hanging chads yesterday, but yeah, you're right. This one, we've been waiting to find out a winner for some time and finally have it. Yep, and it was a nail-biter. It may have taken an extra week, but we do have a winner in the Senate race for the Democratic primary. After a lengthy process to count up absentee ballots, Amy McGrath was able to fend off a late charge from State Representative Charles Booker, who was able to edge out McGrath in Louisville and Lexington, but those wins were not enough to propel Booker to the nomination. McGrath lost a bid to unseat Lexington Congressman Andy Barr in 2018, but she will now face long-time Republican incumbent Mitch McConnell in the general election. McConnell has reportedly raised an additional million dollars for his campaign in just this past week. And Keith, uh, there will be so much money raised and spent uh, on this election. It's going to be crazy. There's already Amy McGrath had so much money and so did Mitch McConnell. I mean, we're talking about a hundred million bucks probably between the two of them. I mean, you already know who he has behind him, but we've started to hear more and more behind her leading up uh, to this primary. And I can only imagine there will be more and more Democrats jumping on uh, to get behind her as she heads in to go against McConnell now. That's right. All right. The clerks of Kentucky's two biggest counties weighed in after releasing today's election returns. Fayette County's clerk says this was a good primary given the complications presented by the pandemic. Despite long lines at Kroger Field on Election Day, most voters in Lexington used an absentee ballot, and the return rate was very high. The Jefferson County clerk says she's confident anyone who wanted to vote cast a ballot. 92,000 ballots were requested, about 83,000 came back. Uh, that's all, just shy of a 90% return rate. Incredible. So Lexington did what we asked them to do and stayed home and voted like we, we wanted, and I think we've prevented what could have been a disastrous spike in cases had we all voted in person. We're going to be ready no matter what. We're going to give it our all as we did in this one, and at least we'll have a feel for it in November where we had nothing in the primary. Um, I can just promise our voters that come November, we will be prepared. Keith, definitely a trial run with so much at-home uh, at voting. Yeah, I mean, this uh, pandemic has forced us to learn to do a lot of things a different way, and maybe this in the long run could be one of those things that's a good thing to help us learn how to, to do the voting a little better. Um, the only problem I guess we really had was the one time where they closed the doors in Louisville. Other than that, it seemed to go off without a hitch. Let's hope. Let's hope for the same in November. And speaking of that November general election, I'm joined now by LEX 18 political analyst Bob Babbage. And Bob, I want to get your thoughts on this. Clearly, the Democratic uh, voters of Kentucky, uh, they, they voted in Amy McGrath, but there was a pretty big number of them that voted for Charles Booker. How does that favor Mitch McConnell in the fall if they were split already now? Well, you know, the old slogan is, or the old saying is that the more you fight, uh, the more people get involved. Uh, Wendell Ford used to say it's like cats fighting in the night, you get more cats. So if the Democrats got more cats, then that's a good thing. But the divide was pretty significant. Out of a million votes, that margin was less than two points, Mary Jo, a very close race indeed, a lot of attention focus there, a near record turnout, and a lot to come. We'll hear a lot from both of them about the future and about the McC McConnell battle that they have to face uh, going for his sixth term. It's going to be a, a, a good, pretty good battle, and there's going to be a lot of money spent, but there was already a ton of money uh, and support behind Amy McGrath, and yet she just ekes out this victory. Is she a viable candidate to beat Mitch McConnell? Well, she spent $21 million today and going into today. That's a tremendous amount of money. And for the 600,000 or so Democrats who voted, I figure she could have taken them all to dinner uh, and just had one big mass party uh, if we were allowed to do that in mass, of course. But the, the amount of outside expenditure that came in six years ago, you very well remember, 
when Grimes and McConnell were facing off and that race was tight till the end and McConnell pulled away to win by 15. That was a terrific expenditure on not only the parties and the campaigns, but a number of others across the country. We will definitely see that again in Kentucky. Uh, Trump being on the ticket has got to help McConnell uh, come November as well, yes? Yes, it does, and it will. Uh, the question is by how much. Last time Trump won Kentucky by 30. Right now he appears to be ahead in the matchups by about 20. So that's changed a bit. And if he can hold on to that lead, it would pull some other Republicans as well. But Democrats are fired up. It's a question of how much they come together. If they do that like a year ago after the governor's race, that was pretty historic the way everybody presented a united front. That was still a squeaker for the Democrats. So a lot of eyes on Kentucky today and going forward. All right, Bob Babbage, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you, Mary Jo. All right, we appreciate it. All right, coming up next on Hey Kentucky, we'll cover some more topics of the day. That includes a look at the documentary that tells the up and down story of former UK basketball coach, Eddie Sutton. Stay with us.